You know what's actually quite nice is also because they're so iconic, yeah. because you've read the book and you yeah. know the characters, then you see season one, and then as human characters, mm -hmm. we get to treat them with just, they're just these normal blokes. Yes. So uh, these characters don't know that about their iconic status at all and don't care. I love this show so much. Season right. two is amazing and you both are phenomenal in it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Can you talk to me a little bit about playing the human story in this largely celestial series? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> they um they they they're quite good grounding I think for for the audience and um it's almost like they're you know they're a connector between the celestial world and the audience I think that's been set up really well in in season 2 yeah they kind of magnify the themes in a kind of human way that mm. you find sort of quite relatable um the themes of good and bad the themes of um whether to when and if to trust another person yeah. with your vulnerabilities mm -hmm. um which is what's going on with Heaven, Hell, Crowley, as Aziraphale, and, you know, everyone. Everyone. I love your character's dynamics with Crowley and Aziraphale. Can you talk to me a little bit about working with David and Michael to create those relationships? By this point, their, their portrayals of Aziraphale and Crowley are just iconic, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, but my character didn't get to um, uh, have, have anything to do with them, really, in season one. So it was lovely to actually meet Aziraphale and Crowley in, in season two and go, ah. Oh, yeah, this is okay. That's who you guys are. You know what's actually quite nice is also because they're so iconic, yeah. because you've read the book and you yeah. know the characters, then you see season one. And then as human characters, mm -hmm. we get to treat them with just, they're just these normal blokes. Yes. So uh, these characters don't know that about their iconic status at all and don't care, really. They're, yeah. you know, they're just taking them at face value. Um, quite Two quite kooky, odd guys um, to be either suspicious of or to be Just think they're the loveliest you know. men in the world, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was it like collaborating with Neil Gaiman this season on an original story versus season one where it was an adaptation? Well, his his focus was very, very clear for what, what the story was going to be. Um, him and Ter Harry, Terry Pratchett had, had spoken about what the sequel would be. So uh, that is possibly, so season two might be a bridge to a possible thing that may or may not happen who knows we have to see how much people love season two first um but he was yeah he was very clear in what it was so actually the scripts hardly changed at all you know they quite often you'll get so many different versions of, of a shooting script but really when they when they landed that's what that's what we shot and that's the yeah. story we told but he was love he was uh, very uh, happy being on set and watching mm. his work come to life. He likes actors and he likes that process. He likes watching the process of his words turning, yeah. uh, being owned by other people. He's very generous in that way. He sort of gives his work away to yeah. the actor. Yeah. And he likes writing for specific people, I think, because he feels safe in that he can probably hear how it's, how it's going to sound. So when it does, I think he quite likes that yeah. too. It makes him feel yeah. quite clever and, <laughs> and makes us feel like we've done a yeah. good job. It's good for everyone. <laughs> I love it. I hope there's more seasons. This season is so great. And I want season three, four or five. I want so much more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Thank you. Our pleasure.